So probably the biggest aha moment for us when we realized that even though companies were telling us they were having a pipeline challenge that, you know, oh, we just need more women to apply. They're not applying. Um, and then once we saw that, the numbers didn't change because the hiring managers, when even given um, more diverse uh, pipeline of candidates who are applying, oftentimes still are subject to the bias. Um, and so, you know, at, and during the interview phase, um, we, you know, we go with what's comfortable. We go with what we know. And so once we realize that, we started thinking about, well, how can we drive more transparency and account accountability to remove that bias that happens after, you know, at the interview stage? Um, and so that's why we built in uh, what we call a decision equity index, where we're tracking how far along different demographics of people make it um, at each interview stage so that even at the individual hiring manager level, you can see where there may be bias, where there may be um, trends of certain demographics of people not making it to the next stage, even though they have all the right qualifications. Venture capitalists, the investor community, is a lot more risk averse than people understand. And so there's a lot of pattern matching. I've seen Mark Zuckerberg grow this company to yield 100x return. So how do I find more Mark Zuckerbergs? What are the traits? What are the patterns? And so the disadvantage of that for underrepresented minorities and women is that we don't meet a lot of those same patterns. Um, we don't check all all those boxes. And so I often tell people sometimes I feel like a penguin pitching, uh, building a beach resort. They just, they can't connect that. How would a penguin know how to build a beach resort? I've never seen a penguin that knows about beaches um, because they've never seen a black woman build a company from nothing to a $10 billion valuation. Um, and so I think what Elevate Capital is doing is really extraordinary because it recognizes that flaw, that the, the rubrics that venture capitalists are using to measure potential success um, leave out a lot of people. And so it's, it's interesting that I'm you know, in the process of fundraising, overcoming the same bias, same type of bias that I'm also trying to build software to mitigate. Um, but I think uh, the investors that get it, that see that there's a gap will um, probably create funds that yield the highest returns. I was introduced to Nitin from a fellow entrepreneur. Nitin is has a lot of similar traits in terms of just passion around like giving people opportunities who are, have been often overlooked, and not just from like a social and moral perspective, um, but from a capitalistic perspective. Like this just makes business sense. Um, and so for me, it was a really good fit. And um, since the investment, working with Nitin has been, and Elevate has been really valuable. Um, he's connected me with amazing advisors. Um, he's done a really good job of promoting me um, amongst the um, limited partners that have contributed to his fund. Um, there's been um, some other people who have been sort of uh, board advisors, um, potential employees, et cetera. So there's been a lot of value even beyond just the investment um, that Nitin and Elevate has made in Blendor. And yeah, we're really looking forward to uh, the future and um, even uncovering more ways in which we can uh, make this thing grow. Yeah, so probably the biggest asset that Knit and Elevate have added since investing um, is helping us get closer to product market fit. We came in with a very um, transactional model, business model, where we were just working with companies within the context of a talent marketplace. But Nitin connected me with um, some folks who were sales executives in HR tech companies in the past, some that have exited, some that are still in operation and, and doing really well. And so what that enabled us to do was leverage the expertise of people who really knew how this HR tech business worked um, and really just optimize our revenue model so that we were delivering the most value um, to our customers, but also um, getting the highest potential uh, return. So um, I would probably say that was the biggest value in terms of advisorship that we've gotten from Elevate thus far. 
Networking in the Portland community has contributed to Blendor in probably two big ways. One, um, we've actually got additional investors based in Portland, angel investors, um, which of course is always valuable. Uh, and two, we've gotten access to, uh, so for example, there's a hospital there that we're um, in the early stages of talking with about ways they can use Blendor uh, because we know unconscious bias is actually a big topic in the medical community. Um, and they're sort of in the early phases of exploring different trainings and tools that can help um, in those settings. So we're working with the hospital based in Portland. There are also um, some folks in the real estate industry uh, that we're working with in Portland. So uh, I would say both on the investment side um, and on the client side, we've seen a lot of really good um, movement, networking, and traction in Portland.